Next, we will discuss the T distribution. For every new distribution, we will follow the following template. First, we will discuss the parameters and the properties of its probability density curve. Then, we will discuss how to compute the probabilities and find the x sub alphas. Let's get started. The probability density curve of a T distribution looks a lot like the standard normal probability density curve, and it has the following properties. Property number one, the total area, of course, is equal to one. Property number two, the curve extends indefinitely in both directions. It is approaching but never touching the horizontal axis. Property number three, the curve is symmetric about the zero. Property number four, as the number of degrees of freedom becomes larger, T curves look increasingly like the standard normal curve. The degrees of freedom is a single number that determines entirely the shape of the curve and is called the parameter of the distribution. We would use the following notation to label a variable that has a T distribution with df degrees of freedom. Let t be a random variable that has t distribution with 7 degrees of freedom. Then the probability density curve of t takes a very specific shape determined by its parameter degrees of freedom, which is equal to 7. Now we want to be able to find the probability such as this one and find the t alpha such as this one. Let's make sure we understand the questions well. To find the probability that t is less than 2.54 means to find the area under the t-curve to the left of 2.54. On the other hand, to find t sub 0.05 means to find the value, the area under the t-curve to the right of which is equal to 0.05. Luckily, there are many ways to use technology to answer these two questions. In reality, while it is not too hard to use technology to find the probabilities, very rarely one would have to do these tasks in the applications. However, while it is also not too hard to use technology to find T alphas, this task will be very common in the applications, so it is worth learning how to perform this task by hand. Let T be a random variable that has T distribution with 7 degrees of freedom. And let's find t sub 0.05. The most frequently used t sub alphas are summarized in the following table. We need to identify alpha, which is 0.05, and the degrees of freedom, which is 7. Then look for the value in the intersection, which is our desired t sub 0.05. Let's do another example. Let t be a random variable that has t distribution with 11 degrees of freedom. And let's find t sub 0.01. We only need to identify alpha, which is 0.01, and the degrees of freedom, which is 11, and then look for the value in the intersection, which is our desired t sub 0.01. How about the alphas that are on the other side of the spectrum? Turns out that while it is possible to create a table to summarize such t alphas, there is no need for it. Let t be a random variable that has t distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. And let's find t sub 0.80. Since t distribution is symmetric about 0, we can use the property of alpha notation and conclude that t sub 0.80 is equal to the opposite of t sub 0.20, which we find by identifying alpha and the degrees of freedom and then reading the t sub 0.20 from the table and finding the desired t sub 0.80 as the opposite of t sub 0.20. Let's see an application of this new knowledge. For example, the z-scores of the test results of a sample of 10 students follow the t distribution with 10 degrees of freedom. Let t be the z-score of a randomly selected student. Let's find the following probabilities and compute the 95th percentile. It is given that t has the t distribution with 10 degrees of freedom, so we can express it like this. And we can use technology to answer every single question. Let's interpret the results. 
there is a 23.5% chance that the z-score of a randomly selected student is less than negative 0.75. There is only 1.6% chance that the z-score of a randomly selected student is greater than 2.5. There is a 72.3% chance that the z-score of a randomly selected student is between negative 1 and 1.33. If your z-score is 1.8, you are better off than 95% of the students in the sample. Now, we can claim that we know t-distribution.